Using sodium bicarbonate to enhance high intensity exercise performance is nothing new. Athletes and scientists have been mucking around with this idea for about 80 years or so. But I guess the recent rise in popularity of it is probably due to Morton releasing their bicarb soda system. So they claim that this system, well, it does make it much less of a faff to take, um, just much easier, more palatable to, to take the required amounts. But importantly, they claim that it um, significantly reduces the side effects um, that come from taking the, the amount that you need to gain the performance benefits. And those side effects are significant. So I think probably the reason it hasn't become more widespread in athletes is because of those side effects. A lot of them don't actually make it to the starting line because they're too busy on the dunny pooping their guts out after taking this stuff. So apparently the side effects are pretty full on for a lot of people. And it's just a lot of sodium bicarbonate to take. Um, so Morton, I think, are trying to change that with their system. I'm not going to try that. It's stupidly expensive. Um, but I am going to try another way. But before we talk about that, it's probably worth going over what exactly sodium bicarbonate supposedly does in athletes. And it's, it's only really useful for high intensity anaerobic exercise. So that's exercise lasting between one and seven minutes. Because when we're using our anaerobic energy pathway, one of the byproducts of that is hydrogen ions. And once those hydrogen ions build up in the working muscles, it of course makes them acidic. And that gives rise to that burning sensation that we all know and dread. And so we just have to slow down when that happens. So the idea is that by having an alkaline substance, so sodium bicarbonate, that, that acts as a buffer. It helps take those hydrogen ions out of the working muscles and into the bloodstream so that we can keep going. The research out there is pretty conclusive from what I gather. This stuff works and is pretty significant performance, performance gains in time trials. So real world time trials, I think it's, it's pretty much confirmed that yes, this stuff works in those high intensity anaerobic exercise sessions. But there are a lot of different protocols floating about the place and, you know, it can be tricky to kind of decipher it all. I came across this little infographic by put out by the Australian Institute of Sport. I'll try and put a link to it in the description down below. But it's really good. It's just a little two-pager and it's a really nice, neat, easy to follow summary of best practice. So they've come up with a protocol that they recommend for their athletes. So I'm going to try it out tomorrow. I've got a three minute time trial and a 12 minute time trial planned for the same session. So for the first time, I'm going to try this sodium bicarbonate loading protocol and we'll see what happens. Hopefully I am not one of those athletes who just gets stuck on the dunny pooping my guts out. So there are basically two loading protocols you can do. You can do what they call the acute loading protocol, which is where you have all of the sodium bicarbonate two to two and a half hours before your race or your session. And there's also a chronic loading protocol, which is where you, you kind of do a loading protocol for five days before the event. So I'm going to go with the acute loading protocol. They say this is the most effective one, and it, it seems like less of a theft doing it on one day rather than five. So they say that the recommended amount is between two and 400 milligrams of sodium bicarbonate per kilo of body mass. So I'm going to go for 300 milligrams per kilo. Um, just thought I'd try it out in the middle and see where we go. And they also say you should consume that with 10 milliliters per kilo of body weight of fluid. So they say that's really important to help prevent some of these side effects like diarrhea and all the other stuff. Plus, you need to consume quite a lot of carbs with it at a rate of one and a half grams of carbs per kilo of body weight. So for me, my protocol is going to be, let's just get this up. Um, so yeah, tomorrow morning, I'm going to start loading two and a half hours before my session. And it's going to work out to 23 grams of sodium bicarbonate 
So to get that, I am going to use tablets. So in, I don't know if they're, if this is like a, a generic brand or whatever, but in Australia where I live, is this stuff called Sodabic? Sodabic? Um, so just really convenient form. So these are sodium bicarbonate capsules. There's 840 milligrams in each of these. And so it's, they're marketed as a urinary alkaliner, alkalinizer, alkaline. You get what I'm trying to say. Um, so this is going to be much easier because taking, was it 28 grams? Taking 23 grams of sodium bicarbonate just by itself would be pretty gross, be very salty, and I just don't want to do that. So I bought these. It is more expensive than just buying the straight up um, baking soda, but I reckon it's going to be a lot easier. So 23 grams of sodium bicarbonate is what I'm going to have with 770 milliliters of fluid with 115 grams of carbs. So I'm going to combine the fluid and the carbs. I'm going to use a carb drink with 80 grams of carbs in 770 mil of water. So that'll kind of hit it on both fronts. I'll also have a couple of bananas to take it up to the 115 grams of carbs. And they also say don't just have it in one big gulp or one big session. Um, they say spread it out over a period of between 30 and 60 minutes. So I'm going to go for 60 minutes. So I'm going to set a timer. I've got it all written down. And every, I'm going to have four of those tablets every eight and a half minutes with 110 mil of fluid. I'll have one banana right at the start and then another banana 30 minutes later. So yeah, four capsules every eight and a half minutes. So over an hour, I'll consume the whole acute loading protocol dosage and we'll just see what happens. Now, with this, it's going to be really hard to say how much of a difference it makes. Running an experiment like this on yourself is kind of impossible to get objective data. We're just going to have to go off, how does it feel? Do I feel like it helped? And even then, it's going to be tough because I've just come off a marathon block and had quite a big rest afterwards. I had some runner's knee after that. And so I have lost an, a very noticeable amount of fitness. So I'm expecting to underperform in tomorrow's test compared with last time I did it because I'm heavier. Like I, I went to town with the beers and, and all the, not junk food, but lots of chocolate and sweets. So I'm heavier, significantly heavier than I was. And also I have definitely lost fitness. So I think I am going to do worse in the test tomorrow than I have done before. But I do have the last couple of weeks training to compare it to. So the last session I did was two days ago and that felt really hard. It was kind of depressing. So I know what it feels like to do these high intensity short sessions. Um, and I'm going to keep revisiting this. So if I feel like it's helping, then I'll even look at incorporating it into my training, like before fight leg sessions, before 5K sessions. But I'm going to start off with these um time trials that I do every four weeks. So every four weeks, I do a three minute time trial and a 12 minute time trial. So I'm going to track my progress during that, see how it feels. Hopefully I don't get any upset stomach. And yeah, well, this will just be an ongoing experiment and I'll revisit, I'll repost videos to see how it's going. If I feel like it really helps, then I'll try and come up with a way of incorporating into training. But I already get up at 4.30 a.m. to do my morning workouts. And if I'm having to load up with this stuff, you know, two, two and a half hours beforehand, I just don't love the idea of regularly getting up at 3.30 a.m. every time I want to train. But we'll see what happens. So I will get everything ready. I'll do my loading protocol tomorrow and I'll see you down at the track. Well, I'm all loaded up on sodium bicarbonate. It went okay. My stomach does feel a little bit funny now. I wish the toilets were open, but um, hopefully it's not going to affect things too much. So I've done my warm up and time to enter the pain cave doing this three minute all out effort.
was awful. Man, I've lost so much fitness since the marathon. Devastating. But I did it. I've got a baseline now. Did the sodium bicarb work? No idea. No idea. Ah. Oh. Now I've got to do that again for a 12 minute trial. Have a break. Dearie me, i got some work to do. Well, I'm actually pretty angry with myself after that because I ended up giving up on that 12 minute test. I didn't complete it. After I think six and a half minutes or so, I just stopped. I didn't have the mental energy to push through. I think I was so annoyed at the fitness that I'd lost. I knew it was a lot slower. So I was letting that get in my head and because I knew I wasn't going to be setting any, any new personal bests, I just didn't have that mental fight to push through, um, which is really disappointing. I've never given up on any test or any race or anything before. So this is the first for me and it feels pretty crap. Um, <laughs> I guess because I, I spent so long building up that fitness for the marathon and got to a really good place. And it, it's just such a shame to see that fitness seemingly disappear in such a short amount of time. And I shouldn't be too harsh on myself for that because I did have to rest because of the runner's knee. But it wasn't just the runner's knee that's made me lose that fitness. Um, it's the way in which I've celebrated and been less disciplined in the time since. So with the diet, um, but there we go. We can't dwell on that too much. Um, my fitness is where it's at. I can't change that. I'll learn from everything that's happened and move on. And you know, in that previous video, I said, going forward, I'm going to be less harsh on myself. So I'm going to put my big boy pants on, um, stop having a sook and, and move on. But to the topic at hand, the sodium bicarbonate, obviously it's a bit hard to say how much of a difference it made. So I, it's been a long time since I've done this, these tests, so I don't really have much to compare it to. Today was more about setting a baseline, but I do think that it made a difference because even though I didn't set any new personal bests, it, it wasn't, I don't think, acid buildup in my muscles that was preventing me from going faster. I think it was more just general... Um, fitness levels, like general, I don't know, muscular endurance, cardiovascular fitness, whatever it is. But I, it didn't feel like it was a buildup of acidity in my muscles. I didn't get that really heavy feeling. I didn't get that burning sensation. So I, I think it may actually have done the job in terms of buffering that acid buildup in the working muscles. And the same thing in the 12 minute time trial, which ended up being a six and a half minute, Again, it wasn't acid buildup that made me stop and slow down. It was just general fatigue. So obviously it's way too early to say, but I, I would say the early signs are promising. In terms of how it sat in my stomach, it was okay. I did feel a bit funny down there, but it was nothing that wasn't manageable. Um, so yeah, I'll just keep an eye on that going forward. So First test done, as I said, this will probably be a bit of a series. I'll come back to this every month or so. Um, and yeah, just keep you guys updated with how it's going. But early signs, I would say, are promising. Definitely more testing required, of course. So I'll keep you updated. Um, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see where this journey takes me. I'll see you next time.